I was born brown, Jewish, Israeli, with Jewish Indian heritage from the Bene Israel community in Mumbai. I have lost many friends since Saturday morning and have been in a constant state of fear and dread for many, many more. My mom and my sister have been sitting in bomb shelters, which is a terrifying and a privileged reality in Israel, Palestine. Like all humans, I did not have a choice in where I was born. Like many of us, I was born into this reality. As a teenager in Israel, Palestine, I made a choice. I started participating in Palestinian Israeli youth dialogue programs. I met, talked, played sports, and ate meals with people who were often talked about as enemies at my school and on the news. This was the first time ever I had, a meaning, I had meaningful conversations and relationships with Palestinians. Even though I'd interacted with Palestinian citizens of Israel on a daily basis in my hometown, through the healthcare system, in stores, shops, and restaurants, and on public transportation. I wasn't taught about their history, and they were the first ones to share with me stories of Palestinian existence and resistance. I made a choice as a young, brown, Mizrahi man. I made a choice. I joined the Israeli army and later on became an officer because I wanted to belong in a society that erases me and my heritage, in a society that often viewed me as a threat because of my dark skin. I also thought, naively, if I might add, that I could do things differently, that I can change how the Israeli army treats Palestinians, but then I learned that systems of oppression will always remain systems of oppression. I saw with my own eyes for the very first time what apartheid and occupation look like. The everyday horrors these systems create for Palestinians. And often, the people I was required to oppress and police looked more like me than those beside me wearing the same uniform. As a combat officer, I was stationed near Shem, Nablus. One moment is seared onto my soul. I was ordered to arrest two Palestinian children, a six and a nine-year-old, for picking flowers and herbs. I refused that order that day. While at that moment, knowing that one refusal will not be enough to change or take down this system, because this is a system of apartheid. I made a choice. As a young officer, I made a choice. I decided to go into emergency management to provide assistance and planning for disasters like earthquakes and missile attacks. I needed to get out of my role enforcing occupation in the West Bank. I still wanted to belong as an Israeli with every fiber of my being. And for Israelis to see me as more than just the color of my skin. 
I was reassigned to the Gaza envelope, preparing Israeli municipalities and communities around the Gaza Strip for emergencies. For an event exactly like this one, still unfolding in this very moment. Many warm and loving people. Many were settled, settled in that area by Israeli governments in the 50s, 60s, 70s, because they're Mizrahi, because they're Ethiopian Jews, because they're Jews from the former USSR, deeming them as an acceptable Deeming them as acceptable losses in wars. I experienced too many wars during that time and witnessed the disproportionate violence my government brought down on Palestinians in Gaza. I can still feel building violently shake around me every time the Israeli Air Force dropped a bomb on Gaza during the war in 2014. At the time, I was stationed in Sderot, a small Jewish Israeli town nearly eight miles away. That is how unbelievably strong these bombs are. These air raids were always then followed by the wailing sound of sirens, a sound that still haunts me to this day, warning Israelis of incoming Hamas missile. It made me realize that there's no amount of containment, no Israeli military campaign that can keep us from facing the consequences of oppressing an entire people. I made a choice. As a, as a disillusioned adult, I made a choice. I went into shared society education and Palestinian Israeli youth dialogue programs. I went back to the experiences of my youth, building and strengthening relationships between Israelis and Palestinians to push through my pain, my socialization, and my education to be in true and full solidarity in the movement that is working to dismantle Israel's apartheid system and for a thriving future for all. I just want to repeat that because this is such an important thing for all of us, a thriving future for all. Palestinians and Israelis, where Jewish Israeli safety is deeply connected and dependent on Palestinian safety. I fear for my Palestinian friends in East Jerusalem and at the West Bank who are now facing unchecked settler and Israeli army violence. I made a choice. Our politicians and leaders have made choices for us to promote their own racist and messianic agendas. Choices that lead to ethnic cleansing erasure, and death. 
choices that have him that have impacted so many families and communities my communities victims of hamas or israel all victims of israel's choice to maintain its apartheid system I am here today making another choice. I have, I have every reason not to be here. To let my anger overcome my grief. To let vengeance overcome true and real justice. Celebrations over blood that was spilled, calls for genocide, all offering more of the same while co-opting this tragedy that is unraveling for our very eyes. We should not, no, we cannot let that be the dominant narrative. The choice I am making today here with you is to be here with you in my pain and in my grief. I choose to lean into my humanity and encourage all of you to do the same as we mourn and call for an end to occupation and apartheid. Compassion, empathy, and love. This is all I have to offer to myself and to all of us at this moment. Thank you so much for being here with me.